Hey everyone, I want to uh, welcome you back. Uh, as always, we want to thank you for taking the time to, uh, to study with us and to share, share the word. And uh, today, we're going to be in uh, 2 Thessalonians. Uh, if you want to follow along, uh, we pray that you'll do so. Uh, we'll move through the scriptures pretty quick, but uh, you can always come back and, and do this at your own pace. But this morning, we're going to be again, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And we're talking about the events uh, that precede the, the Lord's the Lord's coming, the second coming. And it says, Now, brothers and sisters, let us tell you about the coming again of our Lord Jesus Christ and how we will be gathered together to meet him. Now, of course, this is talking about the rapture of the church. You know, the rapture of the church is one of the most controversial things within the church. You know, depending on who you listen to, on, on your interpretation of Scripture, some people believe in a pre-trib rapture, a mid-trib rapture, a post-trib rapture. But ultimately, you know, it's it's not something that we need to argue about. You know, it's not something that has anything to do with your salvation. If you're focused and you're living for the Lord, whenever He comes for us, we'll be ready. But as we go along here, we understand that we're talking about the rapture, not not the second coming necessarily. There, it's it's a it's a different thing, but um, but that's a different different sermon. First Thessalonians four fifteen and seventeen says, "For this we say to you by the word of the Lord that that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord Himself will descend from heaven with a shout." with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ, these are believers who have passed on, will rise first. Then those who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And this we shall always be with the Lord. So we go into 1 Corinthians 15, verse 51, 53. It says, Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. And this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. Verse 2, please don't, please don't be so easily shaken and troubled by those who say that the day of the Lord has already begun. Even if they claim to have had a vision, a revelation, or a letter supposedly from us, don't believe them. Okay, we have to understand here what's going on is the Thess the Th <clears throat> those in Thessalonica, Thessalonica, I'm sorry, can't talk this morning, were under heavy persecution. And basically they had been convinced that the Lord had already come, that they were going through this tribulation, and that they basically missed it. And that's something that's happened in, in other churches and other, other parts of the world. You know, there was a, a story not too long ago about the underground church in China that... Um, they were under such tribulation and such oppression that, that they had been convinced that, that they had missed it, that they had missed the, the rapture and that they'd been left behind. And because of that, many, many fell away. And it's a, it's a terrible, terrible thing. But he says, don't be fooled by what they say. For that day will not come until there's a great rebellion against God and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the one who brings destruction, the son of perdition, that's who we're talking about here, depending on your translation. The son of perdition is another name for the Antichrist. Okay, and this, this verse, to me, backs up uh, more of a preacher of rapture. But again, what I believe as far as rapture goes really doesn't matter. It's all about interpretation. It's all about, you know, what you think. But again, it's not, not something to argue about. It's not something to, to lose our salvation over. It's just a doctrinal thing. But 1 Timothy 4 once says, Now the Spirit expressly says that in latter times some will depart from the faith, the one true faith. They will still have churches, there will still be people who call themselves believers, but they've departed from the faith. And unfortunately, you know, we see a lot of that right now in the churches. We see a lot of that going on, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. And we talk about this antichrist, this, this, this son of perdition, he will exalt himself and defy every god there is and tear down every object of adoration and worship. He will position himself in the temple of God, claiming that he is God. Okay, 1 first, first Corinthians 8, 5, and 6, For even if there are so-called gods, whether in heaven or on earth, as there are many gods and many lords, 
Yet for us there is one God, the Father, of whom are all things, and we for him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we, we <coughs> I'm sorry, through whom are all things, and through whom we live. So we know that without Christ that we're dead, right? We're spiritually we're spiritually dead without the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse five says, "Don't you remember that I told you this when I was with you, and you know what is holding him back? For he can be revealed only when his time comes." And here we we look, you know, this is the Spirit of God in the church is what he's talking about. He's talking about the Holy Spirit. Okay, it is holding back evil. You know, he's that. That's why the Antichrist doesn't come on the scene until after the the restrainer is taken out of the way. Okay, and again, that's one of those things that, that to me points to a preacher of rapture. That until the the church is taken out of the way, until the Spirit of God is taken out of the way, the Antichrist, you know, he's being restrained. Evil is being restrained. But again, it's just a doctrinal thing. So. We go on to verse 7. For this lawlessness is already at work secretly, and it will remain secret until the one who is holding it back steps out of the way. Again, 1 John 2, 18, Little children, it is the last hour, and as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. You know, we can look around and we see the whole culture is Antichrist. The spirit of Antichrist is running rampant in this world, in this culture, in our country, in our communities. For this lawlessness, this lawlessness is already at work secretly and it will remain secret until the one who is holding it back steps out of the way. Then the man of lawlessness will be revealed whom the Lord Jesus Christ will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy by the splendor of his coming. And then, again to me, that's, that's post-rapture, Matthew 24, 21 says, For then there will be a great tribulation, such as not been seen since the beginning of the world until this time, nor shall ever be again. Then the man of lawlessness will be revealed, whom the Lord Jesus will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy by the splendor of his coming. Verse 9, This evil man will come to do the work of Satan with counterfeit power, signs, and miracles. He will use every kind of wicked deception to fool those who are on their way to destruction because they refuse to believe the truth that would save them. The only thing that will save you is belief and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, putting your confidence, your trust, your hope, your very life in His hands. Okay? They refuse the truth of Christ and the love of God in favor of death and hell. They chose, they will choose, to follow the lie, to follow the false doctrine, to follow the false teacher. Okay? We go on. Verse 11. So God will send great deception upon them, and they will believe all these lies. For this reason, this reason is the rejection of God, because they've rejected the Lord Jesus Christ, because they, they've rejected His offer of salvation because they've rejected his love they've rejected his compassion all the offers of, of forgiveness and mercy that he's that he's extended to them because they've rejected him Romans 1 28 and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge God gave them over to a debased mind to do those things which are not fitting they didn't like to retain God in their knowledge they didn't want to remember God's word. They didn't want to remember God's truths. They didn't want to live for Him. They didn't want Him telling them what to do. Okay? Then they will be condemned for not believing the truth and for enjoying the evil they do. As for us, we always thank God for you, dear brothers and sisters, loved by the Lord. We're thankful that God chose you to be among the first to experience salvation, a salvation that came through the Spirit who makes you holy and by your belief in the truth. He called you to salvation when we told you the good news. Now you can share in the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. With all these things in mind, dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Stand firm and keep a strong grip on everything we taught you, both in person and by letter. May our Lord Jesus Christ and God our Father who loved us and in His special favor gave us everlasting comfort and good hope comfort your hearts and give you strength in every good thing you do and say. 
We have to put our confidence and our trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. There is no other way to find peace. There is no other hope. This world and the things of this world, the ways of this world, the people of this world are passing away. The only thing, the only thing that will stand is the Word of God. And his word says that his people are not appointed to wrath. So before you guys send me comments or send me messages about pre-trib, post-trib rapture, all this other stuff, you know what? You may not make it to the rapture, okay? Whether, you, whether you're taken up, whether he comes back, whether you die in a car wreck, whether you get cancer, whether you have a heart attack, whatever happens to you, the only thing that really makes any difference is that you're in a right relationship with God that you know Jesus is your Savior, that you've asked Him to forgive you of your sins and to cleanse you of your unrighteousness, that you made Jesus not only your Savior, but also your Lord. That's all that matters. So don't worry about doctrine. Don't worry about anything. Worry about your relationship. Worry about your walk. Worry about your commitment. So until next time, God bless you. Have a great day.